Speaking to us from uh, Bangkok, uh, Mr. Virapat, uh, first up, before we look at the legal issues, the election yesterday, to put it bluntly, resolved nothing. Would you agree? No. Absolutely not. I think it says a lot of things. First, despite the gunfires, despite all the pressure, all the, the scary images uh, on TVs and on radios, people still come out to vote. We are still expecting uh, to hear from the Election Commission what's the actual official turnout number. But I think even if 50% of the people in the country came out to vote in this climate, it shows that the Thai people are resilient and they want to see the country moving forward through elections. I think it says a lot of things and it also shows shows that the number of votes will be significant because there have been some initial reports that there are a lot of no votes, which means people go out to vote but vote for no one. They, they put the, you know, the marks in the, in the section where they are not voting for any particular parties. And that is also important in the way that it shows that even though they don't like political parties, they still like to have an election. Okay. Uh, Mr. Verapat, let's uh, focus on the legal issues, issues now. Reports say the Democrat Party plans to seek a constitutional court ruling to invalidate the snap election held yesterday. Is there a legal basis to declare the election null and void? I think there are no legal basis whatsoever just to say, I think what they're trying to say is that since the election cannot be held on the same day throughout the kingdom, the entire election must be scrapped. But let's not forget, it's a plain and simple fact that yesterday, February 2nd, we saw 89% of election booths went ahead. We saw a lot of people in Thailand go out and do their duties as good citizens of Thailand. So the idea that simply because there are some problems in Bangkok, there are some problems in the southern provinces, the entire election has to to be scrapped is entirely unfair and entirely unconstitutional. What I have to say from the legal point of view is that the constitution actually paved ways for 180 days period for the election commission to solve problems if there are you know, riots, if there are preventions of people from going to vote. And that's what we have to do. We have a 180 days period set by the constitution. We'll go ahead and fix the election problems district by district. So would you say that the opposition's case uh, that the ballot was illegal is not strong? I think it's absolutely ridiculous and I have to stress that the opposition party a lot of members of the opposition party actually joins the protest leaders on the stage. So that's a basic legal principle called the clean hands principle. If you are the person who created the problems in the first place, how could you claim that the problems you created should be legal, uh, legalized by the court? So I think it's absolutely ridiculous for the opposition to come out and say, well, because you know we created the, these protests that prevented election from happening in some districts, the court should scrap the entire election of the whole country. And again, like I said, if the court should do that, it's not only a legal problem, it's going to create a lot of political frictions within the country, especially that citizens of Thailand in the north and in northeast who have went out, voted successfully, will question, why should I have to let go of my votes? Why should my votes be thrown away simply because there are some problems in certain provinces in Bangkok or in the south? And that's going to lead to potentially some chaos on the streets and possibly even bloodshed. All right, so let's just say that the, uh, uh, the process, what, how likely is the process going to pan out if the Constitutional Court does agree and does nullify the election yesterday? Well, if the constitutional court went so far to nullify the entire election altogether, what I'm expecting to see is that there will be a lot of angry people who have expected that their votes should be counted to come out and say, we don't trust this government anymore. This government has given in too much to the protest leaders, and now the court is taking away my votes, my constitutional rights, and so they're going to take the matters into their own hands, which is very worrying. We've seen that happening in a very small, um, in a much smaller scale before, a few years ago, when the Red Church came out to protest on the streets and it resulted in a bloodshed in the middle of Bangkok in the most vibrant cities in the world. So I really hope that the Constitutional Court would think very carefully about what's going to happen. On the other hand, I think the Constitutional Court sees a very clear, a very reasonable solution to this problem is that if you have problems in certain districts, the Constitution actually allows 180 days period for those problems to be solved district by district. And I don't see any point of scrapping the entire election altogether. Okay, Mr. Virapad Pariawong, an international legal academic, thank you for your insights.